Welcome back to Cord Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of cord cutting, including today, Roku OS 14 is in the works with new features and new changes. We'll tell you what to expect and what we expect from this. DirecTV and Dish have lost a combined 17 million subscribers. It's a big part of why they're talking about merging. We'll talk what's happening there. And 5G high-speed home internet is coming to rural America from T-Mobile. We'll tell you what, why and what stands between them and making that a reality. These stories and a whole lot more coming up in a quick minute. If you want to learn more about any of these stories, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment, I'll put a link to each story there so you can read them for yourself. If you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here so YouTube recommends our videos to more people, helping us grow, helping us learn something new, hopefully helping you break free from the high cost of cable TV. With that said, let's dive into it. Roku OS 14 beta has started testing. Now, not a lot's known, but there is a few key things, including improved media playback being a part of this, supporting more formats. Now, Roku is testing this only with developers. So I, I'm gonna get messages right now asking, how do you get in on the beta test? You have to be a developer. It sounds like you have to be an invited developer and sign an NDA. But don't worry, Roku's own developer blog posted all kinds of details publicly, so let's dive into what we know here. A couple of the um, new features include changes to Scene Graph, which is a developer tool that should help them make more powerful apps, but also improved support for different OSs, or uh, not OSs, I apologize, improved OS support for different media types. This improvement will allow Roku to be uh, support a wide variant of different standards helping it improve its media playback as new technologies is added. Beyond that, not a lot is known. Now, a few things we have heard that I suspect will be in this. Number one, advertising. Let's get the bad out of the way. I fully expect that this will be the continuation of Roku testing video ads on its home screen. Ads are the way Roku makes a majority of its revenue now, if I remember seeing that correct, subscription and ads as device sales are a smaller chunk of it. You see that as they face strong competition to keep prices down from like Amazon, who seems to always have its Fire TVs on sale. Now they start testing out video ads in the home screen in existing blocks and hinted that more may be coming soon. I suspect in Roku OS 14, we'll see more ads of all kinds of types, but video apps being primary throughout the Roku OS. So that's the bad news. It's reality, it's how you get these devices sometimes under $20. But with that though, we're also suspecting to see improvements continuing in the home screen, layout changes and the like, and improvements for new hardware. I suspect that we will see some new hardware coming to take advantage of this OS 14 update. We often see this prior to Roku launching new hardware. What will we learn there? I don't know. I do expect to see new Roku TVs coming out early next year. We had the Pro Series come out recently, but they are behind schedule to update some streaming players. And I've noticed strong sales and a few P models, Roku Express and the Roku Stick, a lot of sales there, and the Roku Soundbars. I would expect to see a refresh of one or more of those products with this and to take advantage of the new Roku OS. Nothing evolutionary here or revolutionary, just minor improvements with this, I expect to see. I'd love to know, what do you want to see from a new Roku OS 14 and new Roku streaming players? At this point, maybe slightly faster is great, but overall they do a just fine job with the power they have. Now, we got a new remote. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Pro Remote features roll out to more streaming players in the future with their standard remote. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think and what you would like to see. All right, let's keep moving along. Dish and DirecTV are reportedly in talks to merge. Well, when you look over the last 10 or so years, you get a good idea why. The two companies have lost a combined 17 million subscribers over the last 10 years. And of course, that's been rapidly speeding up in recent years. And because of that, I think it's a big part of why they want to merge um, with this. For example, um, DirecTV had over 10 uh, in 2024, DirecTV had over 10 million subscribers, and in late 2023, um, Dish dropped down to 6 million from 14 million. That's a pretty huge, they, uh, DirecTV, excuse me, not 10 million, they lost 10 million subscribers. That's a huge number. Both these companies getting hit very hard by the growth of core cutting, 
And I would say also buy the more widely available high-speed internet. As high-speed internet becomes widely available, people in rural areas who previously had to rely on things like DirecTV and Dish as their only option for TV now have new options that's been hitting them hard. We'll see how the merger plays out. I still think it's more likely than not something to be reached. You do have two companies that you're gonna to have to find a way to get them to agree. That's not always something easily done. But when you've lost 17 million customers in 10 years and you see that loss speeding up, you can see why people are interested in finding a way to make this happen. But for now, DirecTV and Dish are um, losing millions of customers and a trend that will continue. Speaking of that, hey, bring in rural high speed internet, rural America, making it easier for rural America to ditch the dish. T Mobile said they would like to use a merger um, out there with US Cellular, which they are in the uh, attempted to close, waiting for approval. One of the things they're telling the FCC is part of the reason why they want to get approval to do this is the fact that it will allow them to bring 5G home internet to more rural Americans using the U.S. Cellular Network. U.S. Cellular has a um, great network, especially in Central America, I guess we'll call it, North, Central, Midwest, Mountain Range, that kind of area, very big in like Iowa and the like. And T-Mobile says this purchase will allow them to get their spectrum, get their towers and more to bring 5G home internet to more rural Americans. I'm all for this. I think 5G um, internet is best suited for some of these rural areas. We've talked about this before, running fiber and cable, all that's great to rural Americans, but it's very expensive. You run a mile of cable in New York City, you're going to you know, add dozens, if not hundreds, of customers. You run a couple miles of cable in rural America, you may add one or two or three customers. You never know. That's very expensive to do for a very small return. We'll keep a very close eye on this, but we are seeing a continued growth and new options to Americans. Of course, SpaceX satellites bring to rural America, Amazon's launching a one too. It's good to see 5G home internet doing the same. We'll see if this plays out. I do expect the FCC to approve this and the FTC, maybe that's the one I should talk about most, to approve this merger. Though I wouldn't be surprised if there's certain conditions that need to be met. What those are, we'll have to wait and see. If you're a friendly TV customer, you're getting two new channels, but you're losing two or losing three also. Now, Ion Plus has been added to friendly with this and Craftsy TV will be added at some time in the future. Those are two new channels there uh, with Ion Plus now live joining Ion and Ion Mysteries already on the service. Craftsy TV will come at some point in the future. They didn't say exactly when. Now with this though, they'll be dropping Waypoint TV, AccuWeather, and Pursuit. These channels will start dropping on the 18th of September. And so yesterday for um, Waypoint, Pursuit will drop on the 20th and AccuWeather will leave on the 27th. It's always a juggling act. Some of the, uh, AccuWeather is widely available in other places and there's other wide, um, weather networks available for free online to watch too. So I'm sure Friendly TV is balancing that. Keep the price low, all for channels people will want that they can't get in other places. But with this, um, Friendly is continuously rotating some channels, moving things around, doing their best to keep pricing under $10 a month for their um, core package, but still offer a compelling lineup of channels. All right, DirecTV and DirecTV Stream, speaking of adding channels, will be the new home of a couple new channels. They announced yesterday a deal to bring Chicago Sports Network. We talked about that earlier. It's going to be free over the air. While it will in Chicago area, in the greater Chicago area, it will also be um, included on DirecTV and, and DirecTV Stream. It's a new home for the Bulls, White Sox, and their NHL team, which name is blanking me, but it's their new home. If you're a subscriber to one of these services, you'll find it there in the same spot as the um, NBC Sports Chicago lineup, where these teams used to be. They're not going to be uh, taking over that on October 1st, and will also be coming to other services. They haven't said which ones, but if you have an antenna, it is free over the air. Also, Star TV has joined DirecTV. Star TV joins other channels from their parent company there, um, but DirecTV, DirecTV Stream are now the new homes of Star TV. Speaking of new channels, Philo has added six new channels. These are mostly the free ones like Buzzard, um, Craftsy TV, the Price is Right, um, the Barker era. Is the Drew Carey, um, Carey era Price is Right free channel gone? I haven't seen that in a while. Did I just miss it? 
leave me a comment, let me know. But Philo has launched several new channels there. Check out the full list in our show notes. Well, that's it for today. Hey, real quick, huge thank you. We've had a spectacular September and it's not even over. Huge thank you to everybody for your support. If you made this far, do me a favor, in the show notes, I put a link to my second channel, The Breakdown with Luke, where I review a wide range of technology, not necessarily core cutting related. We're almost at 30,000. I need about 400 and change new subscribers to hit 40,000. You can um, find a link there. Would you consider checking out that channel? We post a ton of review products. There's over 500 there. It's a second channel I've done now for like 10 years or so, a little under maybe. And it really does help me a lot. And I it would appreciate support if you would consider checking that out. The Breakdown with Luke, link in the show. So you can just search The Breakdown with Luke on YouTube to find my channel. You can find my face there with like you do on all my other channels. Well, that's it for today. Keep those questions coming. I answered a bunch in the comments. I really do appreciate it. I need to run and get my daughter to her after school activities today. So take care, be safe, have a fantastic day, everybody.